This is George Ray with the Evolve Academy. Today we're going to talk about custom formats in the Analog Way Live Premiere platform. This platform includes only Aqualon screen processors. First thing we want to talk about is what is a custom format? So in the Live Premiere platform you can create up to 16 custom formats to be used on outputs. And if they are within the spec, the, the EDID specification limitations, you can also use these custom formats for inputs. A custom format, however, is not an EDID. An EDID is limited by its data structure to 4096 active pixels, either horizontal or vertical. So a custom format really becomes useful when you want to be wider than 4096 or taller than 4096. This is especially applicable to single outputs that are wider than 4096 and generally speaking that means LED. It also works, uh, they work very well when you're doing non-video aspect ratio images. So circles, 1-1 uh, screen sizes, anything other than 16 by 9 or 4.3. So custom formats really come into play for those non-video and aspect ratios. And when you're doing uh, especially wide screens and custom formats allow you to do those wide screens with a single connector. So how do you create a custom format? So to create a custom format, you open the format menu, select template, you name your format. You'll see in the example moving forward that I use Bob as my format name. I always select CVT for the timing setup. I always use reduced blanking and then uh, using the simple setup, you set the refresh rate to whatever the refresh needs to be, uh, the horizontal size, the vertical size in pixels, and I click check. And then the calculator will do a check for you. So here we are in the format menu. There is a full option and a CVT option. I'm going to use the CVT option because it's quicker. Set the format rate to 60, turn on reduce blanking. I'm going to put in the horizontal pixel count, so 4800 horizontal, and the vertical in this case is 1400. This is a large LED display. And again, this is going to come out of one single HDMI with a capacity of two. So the test says, yep, I can do this. So now I'm going to go under here and I'm going to change the name and as I said we're going to call this Bob. Scroll down, I'm going to save it in memory slot one, click the save button and I have now created a custom format. After we save our custom format we get a content panel that shows us all of the detailed settings of that format horizontal timing, the sync, the front porch and the back porch, vertical timing, front porch and back porch for that as well. So now I'm going to demonstrate this timing was based on just random pull to, pull to format. So now I'm going to pick a different format as the starting point but put the same values in. And this is to demonstrate that regardless of where your starting point is, these settings are calculated and they will come up with the same results. So I'm going to grab from here the uh, thing I'm going to do the 3840 by 2160 at 60 and then so it loads all of those settings in. I'm going to call this one Al really quickly and then go in and change the settings. So we started with a format change them to the same 4800 by 1400. After we get that set up, then we're going to do our check again and open up the full and just compare these settings with the settings from the saved Bob version and you'll see the sync is the same, 
the front porch and back porch are the same. The vertical sink is the same. So it's calculated. And it doesn't matter where you start, you're going to get these results. Uh, something to keep in mind, take a look at what the especially vertical sink and horizontal sink polarities are, because sometimes your device, uh, wherever you're going, might want something different. And this is where you would come to edit those. So just by changing from negative to positive polarity. So here we are in the edit page, and we're going to try and load Bob as a custom edit. And you can't, because Bob exceeds the 4096 pixel space that is a limitation on an edit. So we can't make Bob an input edit. We can make Bob an output. So if I go to outputs, I have to go under pre-config because I have to set the output to a capacity of 2. So we're going to take output 1, change it to a capacity of 2. We're going to go to our Screens tab, create a screen, enable the screen, add output 1 to that screen, and give it a layer, because without a layer, you don't have a screen in Live Premiere. So that's key. Click the Apply button. So now I've created a screen. Now I'm going to go over into the Canvas tab. And inside Canvas, I'm going to apply the Bob format. So screen one, there it is. Currently it's 3840 by 2160. That's the default format output. Go down here to the drop down, and custom formats show up at the top of the list. There's Bob, and notice the extreme widescreen look to this output. Now I have this hooked up via a single HDMI cable to a Novastar 4K processor, and the front of the processor right now is reading 4800 by 1400 at 60 hertz. Now I'm going to set up an input, and we're going to go through how to create a custom input for this canvas. And we're going to do it on Windows, and we're going to do it on Mac. So to do this, we need to create a custom resolution. And to do that, we select the Aqualon output. We're in Change Resolution. And now we go to Customize. This opens up another window. And again, this is the NVIDIA control panel. It's asking me, are you sure you really want to do this? Danger Will Robinson. Uh, set the horizontal and vertical size in here. So we're going to do 4800 by 1400. Refresh rate 60. We're going to set it for reduced blanking. Those numbers are very similar and close to the numbers we had from the output format. Did test. Yep, I want to save that. And this is my laptop display rebuilding itself. And now I have a new custom resolution for the Aqualon. Now I have to go apply that resolution. Click apply. You want to keep the changes? Yes, I want to keep the changes. Now we go back to our WebRCS. We're going to take our layer, set it one to one pixel size. And there is my laptop desktop filling the WebRCS screen. Here you can see I have a standard 1920 screen. And then I have an extremely wide aspect ratio screen and my multi-display setup. So that's how you do custom format on an NVIDIA graphics card on a laptop. So for the Mac, you want to set up a custom resolution. We need to go to Switch Res X. So the first thing we want to do is look at what is our current resolution. 
currently we are at 3840 by 2160. We need to be at 4800 by 1400. And the first thing we have to do in switch res to make that happen is we have to change the security settings on the Mac. I've already done that. If you want to see where to go to do that, go to Chrome, switch res X, go to the website, support, click on SIP, and this has the instructions on how to disable the security so that you can create and apply a custom resolution. So I'm going to go to the Aqualon monitor because it's my secondary output. Custom resolutions aren't any. I'm going to create one. I'm going to create one. So I'm going to create one here at 4800 by 1400. You notice when I did that, um, the vertical refresh went down to 37. Well, 37 is horrible for a vertical refresh, so let's just go all the way to 30. I click on simplified settings, I get reduced blanking 48 by 14, 30.002. Cool. Positive sync on the horizontal, no check here means a negative sync on the vertical. Go OK. It's not saved, so we need to file save. You have to type in the password in order to save it. Now, there are two options. One is reboot it and it will come up if it's a valid setting, which this one is, it will come up as an option in your display settings. If I click activate immediately, it goes out and it talks to the monitor. Select active. current resolutions, and now I scroll through here, there's 48 by 14 and 30. Display information, that should be current resolution. And let's look at the display preferences. And voila, we have a very wide display gathered. Here in the WebRCS, we're going to go to the Inputs tab, and there's our Mac resolution. We're going to open that up, and it's coming in at 4800 by 1400 at 30 hertz, which is the resolution we just built in Switch Res X. Now we go back to our Screens tab, and let's see how this lays out in our screen. So select the layer with the Mac on it, set the layer size to 1 to 1, and then center the layer, and our Mac perfectly lines up to our 4800 by 1400 custom output resolution. So that's how you create a custom resolution in a Mac or on a Windows machine and use it to do pixel for pixel to a custom format, especially a widescreen format, on the Analog Way Live Premiere platform. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.